Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. It is a noon hour once again on Thursday, folks. Ted Ralston here, our Think Tech studios downtown, uh, momentarily transposed to Waimanalo Beach, uh, where our show, drone, Where the Drone Leads, brings to our, uh, our, our public uh, information and ideas and problems, for that matter, that are associated with this emerging world of drones, dronism, and the behaviors associated with people who are involved. That's a lot of mouthful there. Anyway, uh, with us uh, today, all the way from Atlanta, or actually south of Atlanta, of Sandbridge, uh, Georgia, is none other than one of our frequent flyers on the show, Dr. Mike Brown. And, and there you are, Mike, uh, up on the screen. And uh, we're using the magic of still photography to account for the fact that uh, the uh, video feed isn't working. But anyway, we, by, by a form of, of uh, low-grade Skype, we have you on. We have you on uh, by audio and a image of you in real life. Dr. Mike Brown, who is- Is it, is my, it, is it uh, Uncle, is it, is it my better? Image. No, your better would be uh, uh, your better would be Denise. There's no question about that. This is. <laughs> Yo, she always goes back to the wife. <laughs> right, My yes. God, you know, well. man. I, you know what? I feel like the master of disaster. Uh. I tell you, uh, it's good to be on, and I need to let your audience know that I do refer to you. Uh, I refer to Ted Ralston Senior, that is, as Uncle, as a term of endearment. Um, and so I call him uncle. I will be referring to him as uncle during this, this uh, uh, short interlude. Um, yes, I'm a core professor from uh, Capella University um, and emergency management. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you about this uh, important issue having to do with, uh, did, did, you, did, 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 uncle, wait a did you say dronism? I said dronism. Dronism, you bet. So, so <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's let's uh, back off and set the stage a little bit here. We just it so happens that we talk about these philosophical aspects of drones and technology aspects of drones and regulations and uh, standards, all the the, the 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 important elements that that are going to drive the future of drone from a design and and construction perspective. Uh, what we have facing us right now in Hawaii, and I'm sure in many other places, is an ongoing low level, by low level I mean slowly emerging disaster, and people know about that uh, in, in our lava flow situation at Kilauea and its outbreak on the, uh, on the rift zone that is uh, to the east, and in areas of Pahoa and other places that are, uh, sense are under, under, underneath the lava right now. So we have this, this situation taking place in the natural environment, a natural event, that we can't do anything about, but we can certainly observe it and we can condition ourselves and, and uh, do our operations in such a way to mitigate and minimize harm uh, and uh, deal with this emerging disaster. And we've got these things all over the world these days, disasters, and uh, the question is really, Mike, uh, drones and the ability they have to go in and get information in ways that is maybe different than we've seen before, and is lower risk because we don't have people flying them, and, but can provide really high useful information, be it uh, photographs, be it video, be it uh, uh, chemical analysis of particulate matter in the air, be it um, information about the ability of the radio spectrum to carry cell phone uh, uh, communications. Many factors can be discovered and, and be put to use in a positive way by drones. You, as a uh, professor of emergency management at Capella, uh, how do you think about and teach or generate research that promotes the use of this kind of technology in a, in a disaster situation? Do we have policy and protocol and means by which new technology can enter the legacy stream of disaster management? Um, it, that, you, 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 that was eloquently stated, and I will state this. Um, you use the term mitigation. Um, in an incident like this or any incident or any focusing event or disaster, uh, the best time to uh, think about uh, mitigation and building resilient communities so that they can withstand the onslaught of whatever disaster or disruptive event that may occur. The best time to do that is during the recovery time. Well, you're not, you're not there yet. But when you start talking about a new technology, such as unmanned aircraft vehicles, um, this presents an opportunity that cannot be squandered. All 
of the things that you talked about with collecting particulates um, and uh, getting aerial photographs or something even new, I always call it the three eyes. When you have uh, this type of technology, people need to be thinking about improvisation, imagination, innovation, the all seeing eyes, the three eyes. And to do that, you need to bring everyone to the table. Here's what happens, particularly doing events like this, is you have an, uh, uh, someone who is in charge or someone uh, or a group that's in charge, and there's ex ex uh, they exclude uh, a group when, and by doing so, they miss an opportunity. One of the things that I teach is, and I push with my students, is understanding where the national uh, movement is right now. It's towards national preparedness. And it's a system that says we need to strengthen our resilience and our security, but by systematically preparing it to address threats in risk associated with our nation. And this, is a clue, this includes um, anthropogenic issues, cyber attacks, natural disasters, and so forth. But the way that they were saying that we should do this, Uncle, is by building resilient and sustainable communities which are inclusive of all persons within the community and entities. This would mean private sector, this would mean NGOs. So whoever has a UAV that might be able to provide uh, uh, universities with, with scientific equipment. I mean, NASA was putting on people's projects and sending them to space because they couldn't do every single project. So one of the things that I tell emergency managers is to do not exclude anyone from the table. Everyone that comes and says, hey, I'd like to help or I can provide this, make a spot for them and accept them within there uh, in accordance with the concept of whole community and use their technology, use what they might be able to offer, use their ideas, because there is going to be uh, a, a point where there's, there's, there's something that provides a formative feedback that's positive. That's, that's, if, I can, if I can intersect, inter, intersect sure. that, uh, that vector of yours for a moment, Mike, that's a, that's a pretty cool idea. Use the whole of community solution space, which is a presidential directive, at least it was a while ago, as I recall. And uh, so solving things on the whole of community level, that's actually very intriguing. That, that could be seen as a threat by folks who are in the current uh, command structure of an operation. It could also be seen as an asset or an ally to them, depending on their perspective point of view and how much trust has been built up in the past. So we, it it's implies we need sort of like a new technology ombudsman or some function like that to act as the receiver of these proposals for support and a translation of that into uh, into factors that, that, that deal with how the incident commander is running his operation and what he's graded on, so to speak, and then find right. a way to attach these uh, functions to the existing operating structure. So, well, it, well, it, well, I can understand, I, I, to give you an example, I can understand um, um, an incident commander, because you brought incident commander up, I can understand an incident commander, I can understand her uh, stating uh, and developing a policy or doing a directive that no drones, particularly recreational drones, be in an area where, for example, they're trying to fight fires in Southern California and they're trying to, you've got your C-130s trying to drop um, um, anti-suppressant uh, 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 chemicals for fire, and you've got drones in there. It poses a danger to public safety and public health. However, the smart thing to do, and you and I have seen this, is to take those drone clubs and those and, and the individuals that are uh, that like to use those drones and bring them into the staging area and say, look, we'd like you to work with us, and should we need your asset, we'd like to be able to use your techno your technology and your skills 
to help us and to aid us with addressing the current situation. Now, that's inclus that's inclusivity. That's, that's bringing people in, not excluding people. The national policy directive and the national preparedness uh, uh, mantra is that the, we should use a shared responsibility within the whole community with our state partners, our local partners, with our territories, with our Indian nations, we should do this. So with, I can't see or fathom an incident commander and with the support of any politician saying, we don't need you or want you in this area, particularly if you're talking about true professionals. We're not talking about recreational drone people that just want to fly drones over a president's limousine, as happened with a president a couple of years ago. We're talking about who, like the University of Hawaii, that may have uh, tests that they would like to do. Uh, we're talking about um, 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 maybe some news media uh, that might would, would like to provide a certain service. If you're the incident commander, you can control that and work with them. And if they're not willing to abide by it, then you can say you, you're excluded because you're not working within the parameters of, of our plan and our stages. Now, that's different. But to exclude and not use a resource that's available, no emergency manager that I know of, that I have worked with, that I uh, teach, would ever do that. Come one, come all. Walmart, you want to help us with providing this? We appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Red Cross, you want to do this? But, but everybody comes under the same tent. We're all on the same page, but nobody gets turned away. So that's, that's so pretty cool. So if we take yeah. that, that, that and, and try to figure out some kind of a, a credentialing structure, a communication structure, a control structure, some level of, some first level of, of structure for how that sort of thing would apply to drones. It, I, I use this term ombudsman, uh, but this is sort of a structured ombudsman because the right. drone people coming in would have to have a credential check of some kind and they'd have to have some exactly. form of liability and they have to have some form of uh, of sustainability, yeah. So, how, is, is yeah. there an example? Of that? I was, as you're saying this, I'm just thinking that maybe the medical side of us, and I think you know a doctor very well, uh, yeah. who would. Uh, yeah, you, you claim she's the only reason I'm liked, but go ahead. That, that's well. That's not. That's a claim, Mike. That's a fact. But uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, the medical profession probably has some form of credentialing. Uh, in order for medics, uh, EMTs and such, to join into an operation where they're not previously been involved. So there must be some well, precedent we've got here we can follow. Well, but I, I don't think so. Not everything, not everything requires a precedent. What's happening, in, what's happening in, to the beautiful state of Hawaii is new. This is something, this is something unusual. So why not set the precedent? I, uh, oh, I, I, yeah, I amen. A, in fact, if I, was a, if, I was a senator, if I was a senator or if I was a, congress, a congressman there or if I was the governor there, I would be saying, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want no one excluded, but make sure that they meet certain requirements. Did they get trained uh, through FEMA? Did they get trained with the FAA? Do they have a certification for doing this? Are they with one of the local television? That, that, and if so, you use them. They meet your requirement. Let me see the requirement. Let me let the emergency manager for the island review this, we say yes, and you bring them into the tent. So be the first to set up what is required. Hey. Be the first. Mike, and, and I, I have a degree of that obligation, and I'm also a degree of guilty for not having done it so far. Let's pick up how we're actually going to do that. Let's take a one-minute break here and come back and lay out how we're actually going to sure. do that right here. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? 
Why? He planned this party, planned the snacks, even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go! Oh! Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. It is still Thursday noon hour, folks. Ted Rawson here in Honolulu. Uh, Mike Brown in Sturbridge, Stanbridge, uh, Georgia, uh, giving us a very excited rendition of the various aspects that would turn into an ombudsmanship and a receptive domain in which new technology, including drones and things we haven't even seen yet, Mike, social media, can be brought in in a positive way to support incident command in an emerging and perhaps uh, not practiced, not rehearsed circumstance, uh, unlike uh, a, a, a fire or a, a car accident. So uh, we were talking about that before the break, and you have some great ideas on how we might do that. I, I'd like to suggest we think of a, some kind of a joint task between University of Hawaii, where we are here, where we're seeing the situation on the ground, and you at Capella University, where you have sort of a broad view around the country. Your students are professionals in the in the game from drawn from around the whole country so what if we talked about what if we did that get one of your classes to take this on michael yeah capella university is very diversified we have we have um students from from uh, the ukraine to um, mm. um to Switzerland, I've got two students, one in Ukraine, one in Switzerland, um, and the majority of our students are um, what we call um, scholar practitioners. In other words, the majority of them are already with FEMA or with some agency, the fire department, and they have a wealth of knowledge. So we're not talking about the, the stereotypical 18, 19, 20-year-old person. We're talking about people who have been in the field, been doing this for years. I have three or four emergency managers in my, my various classes, and that's where Capella goes gets the adult learner and say, look, what do you want to do? They, yeah, we want to get our master's or we want to do our doctorate. And so we, I think, uh, I of course couldn't make that decision, but I think that that might be something that uh, that the public service leadership uh, uh, um, there at um, Cabela might do that with the University of Hawaii. Perhaps you can have them reach out to us. I think we'd love to network and work on a project, particularly this one having to do with the volcanoes. Um, this is a once in a lifetime um, issue because you're living it right now. And I don't know that everyone um, within your ecosystem understands all the valuable information that can be gleaned from this. Um, using the drones and technology, uh, using maybe robotics, um, you know, uh, uh, um, and I think geologists would, uh, they're just, would, they would have a gleeful time with this. But every, there has to be this, you're out by default. Everyone should be involved invited in, particularly scientists. And then you say, what is it that you're doing? And the incident commander says, because you're not just dealing with this response right now. You're dealing with the issues that can be learned further down when it happens, because it will happen again. And everything that can be learned, the incident commander is not a scientist. They don't, they, so bring in scientists. The, the, the public have a right to have a view, a certain specific view. Bring them in and provide trust uh, using the technologies that you have. And the, the, so the, it should be a matter of inclusivity. Yeah, I, I, and we've hit that, that term, inclusivity, and we're looking for how to generate it in a positive, trusted way. You hit the word trust again, which is, of course, uh, always going to be under the underlying sinew that ties together disaster response and disaster operations. So that's, we, we, we're talking now about a, a, a pretty good idea here, Mike. And I'm thinking the trust is gonna come about by virtue of, first of all, everybody being included as the system is designed, and then the, uh, the, the means by which credentialing and uh, training is, is generated so that we have a common appreciation of what everybody else is able to do. And then the trust is going to occur through tabletop exercises or some other way to actually involve people and check real issues. But I'll give you an example. Uh, the, uh, the, the drone community is often uh, characterized as either very small backpack, man-packable systems, which unlimber quickly, get in the air, get the job done, get down. Or they can be on the other end, much more complicated with uh, generators and support and um, 
uh, like roving tool chests that have to you take with you to take them apart. So there, there's a rapid response and a slow response function depending on how mature the design might be. So within this credentialing not, uh, n uh, domain, so to speak, we would have to be specifying that a, a drone that serves this mission is gonna have to be able to, within a given 15 minute window, get up, get the job done, and get down and so that the air is uh, clear for somebody I, else. Uh, this uncle, one uncle, example. I think, uncle, I, I gotta cut you off, Uncle, because I think you're thinking like an engineer. Uh-oh, did the it very show? First thing you, the very, yeah, the yeah, very okay. first thing you wanna do is put together the right people. The Got very it. first thing, that's what we do in emergency management. You get the right planning committee. You get the right people in the room first. You get all the people who have stake in this issue, and you bring them in and create a, the right committee. Once you have all those done, the geologists, the scientists, uh, the chemists, everybody, all the drone, uh, uh, per, even, the, even the ones that belong to clubs, you get the right committee. Once that committee is done, they need to determine why they're there. There needs to be an assessment. Once an assessment is done of what, why they're there, what their purpose is, then they can address what the criterion will be for certification. What do we and how do we want to be certified, which includes, which includes the type of technology that will be used, either the backpack or the heavy duty, depending on what, the situation. So the committee is the very first thing. The governor sets up a committee that will address all future incidents that's led by the emergency manager for the island. Now, if I can interject, person, Michael, Michael, let me just ask a question here. That's, that's really great, because that's basically a consensus-based uh, design approach. In fact, what is most interesting about that is the technology side of drones are going in the same direction. That is, rather than the FAA state a bunch of typical engineering requirements, there's going to be consensus requirements established by industry and by operating yeah. teams. And so why not yeah. do the same thing yeah. at the operational level? I like that. So if we, right. in, it, the, in the short it time... Sense, kid. It makes <laughs> It makes absolute sense. So in the short time we've got here, we've got you at Capella research and researching these problems and access to a lot of very motivated students because they're professionals in this domain. At the university here, we have the Applied Research Lab, which deals with the technology and the physical aspects and the communication aspects and the sensors and the processing and this sort of thing. How do we put these together and write up a script that says this is what we could do together to serve the state of Hawaii in this in this obligation, which I happen to have, and do exactly what you said. Pull in the, uh, the right now, the competing or the contending elements and make them into cooperative and uh, uh, supportive elements. And uh, uh, I, think that, I think that's an excellent idea, and I think it's something maybe you might submit to the governor to, for, for review and say, look, this is a, this is a, this is a plan, a template, for how we can include and add value with the whole community in future events that may occur like this, be it a uh, hurricane or whatever. And, and don't, let us, how we can, don't let us escape from that term you used about the third time now, the whole of community, the community involvement piece. I, I, you and a guy it, named- it, it, it's, the, it's the mantra, it's yeah. the mantra, it's the national preparedness system, and our governments are talking about it, and, and I take it I take it to heart, and it means a lot to me, because hey, I, you know, I'm all laid up when it comes to emergency management, thanks to the wonderful school I went to, <laughs> but the bottom line is you and I uh, can collaborate and pull others in. The main thing is to get all of the people who are on the same page with differing ideas, with the same ideas, and we take the idea, we develop the concept, and through that, it's operationalized. Now, what happens to it eventually, I can tell you, there will be theoretical implications that also come out of this. But it, you, when you have an event like this, there's not necessarily a, a, a precedent. You create precedents because what other state had this happen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, other than Mount St. Helens happening, and that was an event that was then done and gone. This is an ongoing, slow onset event, very unusual. There is no reason why there shouldn't be advantages being taken uh, in the line of research to look at this using drones. 
that can touch and do things that, like you stated, we can't do. But we don't think like an engineer yet. We think like a we think like a public administrator and a manager first. We pull all the necessary people in, sit them at the table, and we say, look, this is what we're stuck with, and we want to plan. What is our purpose? What is our goal? What is our objective? We do that. We do the plan. We we attempt to it, we we execute the plan. We see what goes wrong with the plan. That's where you start talking about your tabletop exercises, your pool exercises, and then you redo it again. Remember, emergency management, disaster preparedness is cyclical. It's always living. There's a living thing within it. It evolves as the technologies evolve, as the people change, as the spatial uh, realities change, ecology, environmental. This is so exciting. Now we have this new technology of drones that can provide a measurement, a metric, eyes and ears for things that right now we're missing. Now, Michael, let me just ask you, we just got, got a few minutes left here because we are a half hour program anymore and we got about two, but uh, what, ki what type of resources can you, can you think of that we can bring to the table? We have Charles Warner of the National Council Public Safety UAS. He's not available for the show today, but he is able to help us. We've got your perspective from Capella. Uh, do we need something from NFPA? I mean, yeah. we, Yes, you know, no, no. You know, what we need we need a formal a, a formal declaration of a, memor, a memorandum okay. of understanding to collaborate from the University of Hawaii, and we will respond from from Capella University and and say we'll look at what you're trying to do. We will come on as partners because we exclude we don't exclude anyone, and this is something that our subject matter experts embrace. So we will join you as partners, but we join together, and we have to once we establish what it is that we're trying to do and how we're trying to address it. And one of the things we're trying to address is no exclusivity from being able to use asset, potential assets in the community through the technologies if they are certified and meet certain criteria for the incident commander in order to participate in these issues in the future. You almost just wrote the terms of reference right there, and then we'll add to it your favorite term, whole of community solution or you know, whole of community involvement. We, so uh, those are the two main bookends that will capture this functionality in the middle that we're going to define. What's going, what's going on now, I take what's going on now is that they're not using something that's part of the concept of the presidential policy directed eight to, to include whole of community. That means we shouldn't be excluding unless there is a substantial reason. That would be public health or public safety. But if they're working in conjunction with the with the mandates and directives of the incident commander, either he or she, then they haven't violated any of that, and they shouldn't be excluded. So, they should be sitting in the back seat, sitting in the bench, waiting for their turn to help in any manner that they can. Amen. So what we what you and I need to do is write a one-page terms of reference and a and a proposal that I can uh, work with our Department of uh, Business, Economic Development, Tourism here and our Legislative uh, Committee on Public Safety and get this action going. How would that be? That would be fine. And I can do, what I will do is talk to my chair okay. and um, dean and see if we can identify. We have such a, a, a plethora, and we're deep and rich with a lot of experience from military to National Guard to individuals that know a lot about what's going on. Uh, people that work with IAEA, uh, uh, nuclear, okay. they work the whole gamut. So we've got, we're deep and rich with a lot of brain power. Okay. And we, we'd love to co uh, and, collaborate with you. I'd like to be part of that, as you know, I'm overdue in getting my connection back with Capella, which I'll have to do. Have to oh, you've sit. always got a connection, Uncle, as uh, long as you've got me there. Okay, that sounds good. Michael Brown, we're going to have to uh, cut it off at this point in time. We are at the end of our time, but I think we achieved exactly what I wanted to achieve, a plan to go forward. I will write a terms of reference to start the ball rolling, work it with you, we'll work with the two universities, and let's go forward. How's that sound? Roger that, sir, and be safe and be well. Okay, and you can go back to Denise. Thanks very much, Denise, for letting us have Mike for the last Hi. half hour. <laughs> Hi, Uncle. How are you? Okay, pretty good. And you? Fine. I've been driving him crazy asking him if you were okay. I've been real okay. worried about you. Okay, you take care now, Bye. you two. Okay? Bye-bye. And we'll see you take all care. next week.